Hello everyone, welcome to a lovely summer's evening in East Clare. So I want to measure I want to show you this evening how to measure the content, the carbon content of a tree. And the reason that it's useful to know the carbon content of a tree is that we can then calculate the, how much carbon dioxide that tree sequesters. And, and then you can begin to understand why, by planting trees, we can begin to reduce carbon dioxide emissions and help to save the planet. So there's just a few very simple steps to, to make. And the first one is you want to measure the circumference of the tree, and that means all the way round. And you do it at a standard height, which is 1.3 meters. So I have my soft tape measure here, and I'm going to measure up to 1.3. And I'm going to put it at a... I mean, the, the base of a tree is never flat, so but just put it somewhere fairly representative at the base. And then you measure up, keep it as vertical as you can. And here we have about 1.3. Doesn't have to be perfect. 3 meters. And now we're going to measure the circumference. This is best done with two people, so one person can hold the end. I've just clipped it in there. So we measure on, trying to keep it as horizontal as possible. Okay. And we take the measurement. So it's 1 meter 10, 124 centimeters. And then we do that three times to get an average. So I'll just write down the 124. The circumference of my tree three times. And the reason I've done it three times is a basic science principle uh, that if you, only ever measure, if you only ever measure once, you might have made an error. It might be a mistake. But by measuring three times and then taking the average, you have a, a greater chance of accuracy. So my three measurements were 124 centimetres, 124 centimetres, and 127 centimetres. So I add those up, and then I divide them by three, and that's the average, and it's 125 centimetres. Now, that's just the circumference. Now I want to find out what the weight of my tree is. And I can do this by using a simple chart. Um, and here, so this is the average circumference. And it's somewhere in between 100 and 150. So let's go for 150. And that means this is the estimated average dry weight of the tree is 1,964 kilos. So this tree weighs nearly 2,000 kilos. Now, only 50% of this tree is carbon. The rest is water and nutrients and minerals. So in order to find out how much carbon is in the tree, I divide it by 2. I divide my 1964 by 2, and my figure is 880. Okay. So I've now worked out that this tree, this lovely birch tree, has, contains 880 kilos of carbon. Now, there's something else I can find out, and I can find out how much carbon dioxide this tree has absorbed in order to produce those 880 kilos. And that, again, is a very simple calculation worked out by the scientists, and I multiply the 880 kilos by 3.67, and this gives me a result of 3,300 3, kilos of, 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 ox, of carbon dioxide. Okay, so that's the amount of carbon dioxide that this tree has absorbed to produce this amount of carbon, and that's the amount of carbon dioxide that has been taken out of our atmosphere and helping all the time to reduce carbon, car, um, climate change. Now, when you look at this woodland garden, it's mostly birch trees, and you think of all of these trees and the different weights of them, um, and you can measure each tree in that way, you can find out how much carbon dioxide is being absorbed by this garden. And then each year, trees expand their girth every year. A sycamore tree will expand its girth by 2.5 centimetres a year. A yew tree by less than a centimetre. A hazel, a birch and so on, between 2 and 3 centimetres a year. So in say two years time, or even next year, you can come back, or I can come back and I can measure this again, and then I know that my tree is absorbing more and more amounts of carbon dioxide each year. Thank you.